greeting to you all in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is a privilege for me to come to your home this evening to share with you a little bit of the Word of God. I hope you are keeping well, uh, keeping uh, social distance and uh, washing your hands and all the rules of the lockdown. And God willing, in a few days' time, we may be out of the wood. Otherwise, we'll see what the will of God is and if it's extended or not. We cannot speculate at this moment. We wait what the government will tell us. Um, you know, when, when, we, when we are with God, we can have that peace. That peace that regardless of what is happening, God is still on his throne. C.S. C.S. Lewis said this, life with God is not immunity from difficulties, but peace in difficulties. So during this time when things are not the way it should be, let us have that peace. As we continue with the Holy Week, I wanted to share with us a couple uh, scriptures. Perhaps I will do more readings and let the Word of God speak for itself. I want to read for us uh, in John chapter 13. Uh, from what I will call the last learned lesson before death, Christ teaching us to be humble, humility. Hear what is happening. John chapter 13. <clears throat> now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, when the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand, yes, his hands, and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose up. From supper, he laid aside his outer garment, outer garment, and taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash their, the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, "Lord." Do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but afterward you will understand. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hand and my head. Jesus said to him, The one who has bath does not need to wash except for his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not every one of you, for he knew who was to betray him. That was why he said, Not all of you are clean. When he had washed their feet and put on his outer garment and resumed his place, he said to them, Do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for I am. If then your Lord and teacher have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is no greater than his master, nor is a master greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. I am not speaking of all of you. I know who 
whom I have chosen, but the scripture will be fulfilled. He who ate my bread and has lifted his heel against me. I am telling you this now, before it takes place, that when it does take place, you may believe that I am he. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever receives the one I sent receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. Just so far. Critical and one strong lesson God, Jesus Christ, is living and teaching the disciples, and in the same way teaching to us today, a lesson of humility. Why? Because he knew his time is at hand. And he knew the time the disciple will stay behind will be crucial. It will be full of difficulties. And them having spent time with him may also be taken up by a certain sense of pride. But remember, this is the word who was at the beginning. The Lord Jesus Christ is removing his outer garment and he is taking a place of slave. Sometimes we, 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 the way we operate is different with God's way of operating. Isaiah is saying to us that God's thoughts are different. While on Palm Sunday we saw the disciples singing Hosanna, Hosanna, please save us. For them, Christ has come to remove them from the colonial masters, the Romans, to establish the kingdom of David. They were looking at the earthly kingdom, but the thought of God, God are different with our thoughts. Jesus is setting an example, saying, if you want to follow me, if you want to please the one who sent me, you've got to be humble. In fact, you want to be the servant. You want to serve others in order to please the Father. Jesus is setting an example for us to follow. Peter is echoing this sentiment in 1 Peter in chapter 2 and verse 21. If we can turn there quickly. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 21 and 25. Hear what the apostle who was there while Christ was showing them this example of humility. This is what Peter is saying. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you might follow his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued in trusting himself to him who judge justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your soul. Christ setting such an example for us. In Peter, first Peter again, chapter five, verse five till six, Peter is continuing echoing again the sentiment of humility, He's saying, likewise, you who are younger, be subject to the elders, clothe yourselves, all of you with humility toward one another, for God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, 
humble yourself. Christ is taking time to practically show us that we don't need to look at what we have. We don't look, need to look at how society revere or sees us, but to be humble. Jesus is ushering us to how we ought to be before him and others. That that day when our eyes will see him face to face, we all will bow down, serving him. I want to close with this passage of Philippians, which again, leading us to being humble. Paul is writing to the church of Philippi. He's saying to them in chapter 2, verse 5, Have this mind among yourself, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who thought he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God as a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of man, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. When we humble ourselves, we're showing obedience to God. When we're humbling ourselves, we are actually worshipping God. Christ is leaving us this legacy. Humble yourself. May we heed this word. May we take this example of Christ and see how we can apply that in a society where we find ourselves, in our homes, that our titles, our ranks, our, our, our positions in society are just things which God has put there. That if we can follow his example, to humble ourselves in a more practical way, we will be pleasing God. Shall we pray? Precious Father, we thank you that in a simplest way, you have shown us through the life of your Son, Jesus Christ, how to humble ourselves. Lord, may you help us to apply these things in our lives. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen.